Fighting crime in a future time. Protecting Empire City from Big Boss and his gang of crooks. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the crooks in Cops and Crooks in the 1988 toy line and TV show. This is the Cops and Crooks Bad Guys. Bad guys don't seem to get that much love, so we're going to do it today. Coming up. So first of all, since I haven't made any Cops and Crooks videos, I do want to say that these figures are bigger than what we saw with G.I. Joe or Hasbro's Visionaries, and they're made by the same company, but they have the same construction with the, the O-ring internal construction, a screw through the center of them. Now, these guys get a screw in the front, these get screws in the back, but imagine a G.I. Joe figure that's much bigger, thicker plastic, they actually hold up much better and they're much better quality. Once I found out how good a quality they were and how much articulation they had, I really was on board with this toy line. So we're gonna start out with the Rock Crusher figure and he is a quintessential kind of a jailbird guy. He's got his jail costume on, he's got a little hat there like he was wearing that little hat in jail. Also comes with a big old backpack and, and I always wonder like is it supposed to go upward like this or down so i might have it wrong but after just a couple of different configurations i kind of thought this looked the coolest but anyhow with this uh he is kind of a cool looking figure he's a prisoner 0001 001 so number one he is number one he's got a lot of detail these figures do have quite a bit of detail and none of them share any parts like all the parts are completely different so it's something that we just don't see these days. It's pretty cool. Now looking at this, he does have a cap firing gimmick in his, his, uh, I don't know, what's that, the concrete piece there? And he's gonna chisel off some concrete with that. And there's the wire going to his backpack. And let's see what it looks like if you flip the backpack around. That's what it looks like. So I don't know, I think it looks better like this. But I mean, that's probably wrong too, so who knows? Anyhow, he does have this little ball down on his foot. And this ball is, is kind of what you would see. A ball and chain from back in the day. And it's strange how everything is so inspired by like the 1940s or 20s. or I'm not really up on the style from back in the day. But it feels really old style. And it's a future time. Next up we have Berserko, the second figure here in Wave 1. And he's another figure that seems to be styled after like the 20s, the 40s, some in that era. And in the future time, this dude does look really cool. He actually seems like a figure that would be pretty easy to get, but it was kind of hard for me to get my hands on this guy. And his shirt says, bad is good. And he has a molded in gun that's not removable, but, but see, this gun that's molded in is really weird. You see that in Joe's. But for this size scale figure, they have a lot of a lot of holders for guns that we see here later on with different figures. So moving into this, uh, he has these two distinctly different giant guns. You think they would have given them the same gun, but they're they're both different. And they both have you feed the caps in here, and uh, I, I can't really get it to always work, but yeah. Well, anyway. You get the idea. The, these caps I'm using are not originals that came with it, and they're a little bit thinner, and so they don't quite work as well. When they say they don't work with the vintage, uh, you can still get them to work if you just angle them just right. But aside from these massive guns that he has, he just looks crazy. He has a wild, crazy look on his face, and a cool-looking blue jacket. But I see a lot of these with a ton of paint rub, and so it's really hard to get one that doesn't have a ton of paint rub. Next up, we have Dr. Bad Vibes and his cap-firing robot. And yes, this cap-firing robot is kind of cool. It is interesting. You get sort of two figures in one. That's probably why they make this character so skinny, so they can use about the same amount of plastic. But he comes with this gun that he holds really well, and it can also be held by the robot. Once removed from his hands, is a little tab here that you can tab into this slot, this hole and it holds the gun. It is really interesting how they set this robot up and the robot has sort of a, uh, it looks like a, like, a, like a saw, a double saw blade that could go in there and his uh, ball jointed elbow, shoulder, uh, no elbow, just shoulder. 
So it's interesting, you can do a lot of things with it, but kind of just something I didn't even expect. I really didn't know the robot came with Bad Vibes and until I got it, and it was kind of cool. Bad Vibes also is a really cool figure with a clear head. You can see his giant brains protruding from his head and his orangish hair. He's a, well, it's kind of, a, it's a red, orangish red. I don't know, is he a ginger? I mean, that's, that's definitely not a natural color he's got going on there. His glasses are weird and wicked and kind of cool, actually. I kind of like that. And then looking down, he's got... Uh, some silver accents on his stuff in his pocket right there and then the purple matches the purple on his hands and all of these for articulation and we'll do articulation on him they have all the same articulation as G.I. Joe but adding in a hand articulation so it's pretty good articulation for the time and it, it, it really works and you can do quite a bit of course with that o-ring in there really works great nice looking figures and this real skinny weird looking dude Still looks crazy. Next on the agenda, we have Buttons McBoom Boom. And he's McBoom Boom because he has lots of guns that do a lot of stuff. And this figure is actually really cool. The odd thing is, when I started collecting these, this is the figure that stood out in my mind because of the chest guns. I remembered the chest guns. When I think of this toy line, I think of Bulletproof, and I think of him and his chest guns. So with that, uh, I had a heck of a time last year tracking down a set of chest guns. I had to buy separately a whole figure that had everything except the chest guns. And then I bought a figure that had nothing except the chest guns. So it was really a weird kind of combination there to make it work. And now I have a few because this guy, he looks so cool. Actually, the figure looks way cooler than the actual cartoon. And that's something that in the 80s, the, the toys never looked as cool as a cartoon, but this figure looks so much cooler. He actually looks about 20, 25 years younger than his cartoon counterpart. And so uh, the cartoon counterpart looked like he's in his 70s. And this guy looks like he's in his 50s. So anyway, looking at it, he's got this purple suit, which is kind of cool. I guess you could call it pink also. And his own styling to it. And, and of course, doesn't share with any other figure. The gun is definitely something. No guns are shared in any of these figures, which is crazy. And he comes with this violin case. And it's the whole quintessential, uh, like, I know that Terminator 2 came out after this but terminator 2 uh had had that whole box of flowers thing going on and then had a gun in it and then this is the uh the original idea from back in the day where you had a gun hidden in your filing case uh all those kind of crazy things but i always think about terminator 2 with it but his hat's always kind of hard to find which i actually had my hat the whole time so i didn't realize but a lot of people are like hey man you have a hat you have a hat no i don't have a hat uh not an extra one but anyway this guy Looks cool, looks the part, and he looks very retro. Next up we have Big Boss next on the list here. And this dude is kind of cool and kind of crazy. There's a lot of cool things about him. And yeah, see, he is big, massive, beefy, and a little surprising how much detail went into this guy. Uh, looking at his face, he does look ominous and menacing. And uh, yeah, he is pretty cool. And then he's got all these uh, police badges that he wears as, as cufflinks and uh, all the way down his shirt and he's got his tissue right there and then a little flower. Just really crazy kind of stuff. This massive, massive hand with full of, full of rings. He's got lots of bling going on. Uh, and then the hand is all bling. Vac metalized. You know, Vac metalized is a lost art and uh, this thing does look pretty good. I, every one of these I've seen has good vac metalized hand. So I'm not sure if it's just like they didn't get a lot of use or they did a better process on it. And then you do have the O-ring in there and uh, good articulation with his little stubby little legs. And he does pretty much match his articulation. That's pretty much how it goes. Uh, but yeah, really an interesting looking figure. And it was a lot of fun to get this guy, but he was kind of hard to get his accessories. He does come with his cane and like everything it cap firing. And it has this little weasel. Like he's he comes walks around with a weasel. Yeah, he hangs out with a weasel, but it's not uh, it's it's not Berserko, and and the weasel uh, isn't McBoom Booms. It's this dude, and this thing is kind of rubbery. It's weird. I thought it was gonna be a hard plastic, and it's, no, it's rubbery. It's it's articulated in a way it can move, but kind of cool. So I'm gonna start series two off with Nightmare. Nightmare is a nightmare. He is. 
a crazy looking figure and he does have his head as a cap firing mechanism somehow uh i don't really oh there it pops off and then you can fire the caps which is crazy and then pop it back on there it goes that's how it works okay because uh, i just looked at the instructions before we started this because i never really messed with his head i just know that it was really weird and i see a lot of him missing his head or just the head by itself so uh that's his weapon his cap firing weapon there strange also he comes with this gun and this giant whip with some sort of uh some things at the end some knives some blades at the end and he also comes with another like a, it's just like a little claw hand piece that goes with it and you can also store his gun in this holster which is kind of what i was talking about earlier and a lot of these figures going forward you're going to see holsters for those guns real world holsters and not just like formed in pieces you can actually hold them in there so it's really cool uh everything could fit on this figure i think this is where that little claw hand piece would go if you needed to use it and you want to store it away there's a place for everything kind of a cool figure crazy uh don't really see figures like this anymore and it doesn't really make any sense and that's why i like it so much so next up in series two is hyena and this is a figure that i was thinking okay i got the guy and he's pretty complete what's he missing and it turns out he was missing a lot uh i just there was so much that i didn't know i didn't know he came with this whole extra strap and harness that was going on i didn't know he came with uh well i knew he came with his knife but he comes with so much and that's one of these things about these cops figures and getting them complete it's really hard because there's just so much to it and getting the soft goods in good condition that's always a challenge and his hat that's a challenge and look at that face sculpt it looks crazy he's He's got a really look good looking uh, face with some uh, are those called muffin chops mutton muffin chops or something like that anyway uh the facial hair you think i'd know more about facial hair right and there's with his helmet on his knife it just stows away and this is again something like we'd see this in figures like storm shadow had all this stuff molded in but you couldn't move it out and we always wanted to but now it's like oh well, you know you tra track down like 10 more things that's missing from your storm shadow that would be a nightmare wouldn't it uh it'd be a nightmare and then he's got this giant gun here and this these guns they act so weird like there's this where do you kind of get that whole spring to get it to uh pop the caps it's always something different it's strange over here he harnesses or holsters a gun and for some reason i'm thinking he comes with two of these guns so i don't know where he'd put the second gun but uh pretty cool gun and it goes right here yeah, and, and so the fact that you could holster it, harness it, all that stuff, makes it really cool, really good, and I like that figure. Next up we have Cuckoo, which is a crazy character, and he comes with uh, this clock here. It's kind of like a like a time bomb, ticking time bomb. He is a ticking time bomb. And all these, this piece here moves around, and, you know, I haven't figured out exactly how these are supposed to fit on here, but these are like knives that go together to be clock pieces and it's kind of cool you can uh pull these apart and put them in his hands and then here he is he's also got this gun which is pretty cool everything is gold and uh the gold plastic usually breaks none of this stuff's broken he looks amazingly crazy with his with his mohawk and that is really uh soft good it's kind of a strip of of material that is glued onto his head and sometimes you see those missing uh sometimes they're hardy hard to get with that mohawk on there but that mohawk makes it look so cool he also has a little clock on his chest cuckoo clock and i like the combination of the the black and the kind of gold trim and then the pink slash purplish color he's got a headband going on there just a really cool design overall and then you can put this uh, you can put stuff in his holster there. Now, I'm not sure 100% if you're supposed to put both in there or just one in there or how that's supposed to go. But uh, I don't usually holster these because it's just weird. But it's still kind of cool. This is a really cool looking figure. Wild and crazy. Kind of a fun part of the ranks. Okay, so next on the agenda here in the Series 2 is Bullet. And Bullet is just a wild, crazy... Ar I don't know, this dude just likes guns. Like, he is armored to the gills. He comes with uh, a, a little a vehicle. Basically, he's got, like, a little vehicle that's packed in his card bag with him. It's 
so strange. And, and you know, there's a few figures that had mini vehicles packed in their car bag. These pieces here are kind of a soft rubber and they can be moved around and manipulated around to position properly or however you want it. And this thing, is, it's got to be assembled, of course, and there's where his, his gun shooting mechanism goes and three wheels to roll around. It does have a foot peg. It actually has two foot pegs so we can stand up on it. And I think a lot of people would stand theirs up on it, but I, I do mine where he's, uh, let's see, let's see him standing up on it. But I, I do mine where he's crouched down because that's, that's just in my pose. That's where it looks the best in my opinion. And he can hold the handlebars. Like you really can't hold the handlebars standing up. So he's gotta be bent over or crouching down or something with it. But anyway, moving this thing out of the way, which is still really cool. They include like a little vehicle with the figure for the same price of the figure. Starting at the top, you have his head, his helmet, and he's got this like scope or sight on his helmet, which is really cool. And you can pull the helmet off and he's got a crazy like widow's peak kind of haircut. And uh, he's got like a little, uh, it's almost like a little Superman uh, hair piece going down there like that. And then you can see how he has these, uh, his gun, these bullets all over him. And then he's got another strap that's separate. So it just looks crazy, a crazy amount of, of ammo this guy carries. He has this big gun right here, which I'm not really sure what's going on with all this like attachment. Maybe you can throw it on his shoulder or something. And then he, built in, he has three guns that go into <laughs> three guns going into his leg. That is just crazy that he's got three guns in his leg. I can't believe all that. But uh, let's throw this helmet back on there. Bullet is just wild, and he can definitely deal out some damage. Tough guy, series two. Good thing that all series one, they didn't have to deal with them, right? I guess. So next up on the list is Louis the Plumber. Now this is kind of a quintessential, looks like he's a bad guy. Uh, you would think this is definitely a bad guy. Going back to sort of the retro kind of look to him and that, he does look like a plumber. He just looks like he's a bad guy. He's got what looks to be kind of a futuristic version of a nail gun and he's, he's gonna go do some roofing or something but uh the, i don't know plumbers that use nail guns or anything but anyhow it's uh probably got a torch or something <laughs> look at all this backpack and it's all connected with a hose kind of crazy right there he's got his suspenders some built-in um rips and cuts and tears to assure him he's basically a dude with a tank top and jeans is really what he is and a hat and so uh looks super mean he also is huge this dude is just massive a lot of people have problems with this uh arm breaking and so I've noticed quite a few and it's the right arm is broken for some reason and I've seen one broken in the package it's crazy I don't know what was going on with that but anyway I look now he just have some boots on and stuff but uh he comes with this little accessory chest and it's full of these little parts that that people are just crazy over it's just hard to find them I guess but we're gonna look at each one of these and it's it's kind of cool it's, it's all all in there and we have brass knuckles which that's that's kind of fun some brass knuckles for him he's got a he's got a plumber pipe so he just whack you over the head with a pipe that's gonna work and he's got I and mean, this looks like a shoehorn like what you used to use to kind of get your foot in your shoe when it was too tight a shoehorn that's what it looks like i might be wrong on that one it might not be a shoehorn and then we've got this which i'm not exactly sure what that is either but uh, looks like another thing that you would put in your shoes to like stretch them out but still kind of cool that he's got all these accessories uh they're hard to find some of these smaller ones and everything that's small in any toy line it's just hard to get your hands on but for whatever reason these are harder than usual for even the little guns that go with these guys now last up we do have turbo two tones that was packed in i believe he was packed in with the roadster vehicle and the thing is that Hasbro's real good at packing in a figure you can only get with the vehicle if you pay the extra higher price for a vehicle That's how you get the figure and so there's less of those figures around But it seems like with this guy. There's actually quite a few around kind of easy to get the figure He's not that hard, but this was one of the lower price point vehicles It wasn't the highest price point one so looking at the figure himself He does look cool like maybe one of the coolest looking bad guys they've got with a with a hairdo uh, the facial hair, the glasses, and he's got the suspenders, and he's got the 40s or 50s style, maybe the 20s style of a shirt, and the pants. It looks like he's going to go riding, like he's got that like jockey pants going on there, and then some knee pads and stuff. So really kind of cool, but this, again, 
he has his guns mounted right there in in the molded holsters which is so cool and they're tiny it's just it's just really cool how they did this it works well and he's got to fit in the vehicle too and have that so that really does work now putting him aside or maybe just sticking him in it he can go back in his vehicle he is going to be able to drive this vehicle now there's uh, the ability to grab onto the steering wheel of course and so I like that I have trouble getting both hands on the steering wheel but it is doable with some time and it doesn't quite look right it looks like he's way up on it like that so I mean I kind of think he wants to look cool so he's gonna be kind of chilling back in it and have one hand on the steering wheel so that's kind of how that's gonna look now this thing does look like a like a hot rod roadster kind of thing covered with all kinds of stickers you know you had to apply your own stickers back in the day you've got this gun on the back and there's room for a figure to stand on the back with a with a, probably two figures and then they can hold on to this too with the peg and all that so kind of really a cool vehicle overall i do like it uh he has headlights in the front which there's no stickers or anything so it's kind of all molded in and some some of my stickers aren't the best it's not the best looking or best condition one i was actually going for cheapest one i can get you know that's kind of the the route i went with this toy line at first then i realized it's not 100 percent cheap now in the back you have you can plug in this uh it slots right in right here this safe and what's cool about the safe is they have these ignats ignats whatever i think it came with like six or ten of these so i only have a few uh i actually have a few safes and each safe has uh, you know a couple of few of these in there it was just kind of fun uh you got to have something for them to go after and stealing a safe and throwing it on the back of their hot rod that sounds like a whole lot of fun doesn't it one feature about this gun is it has a double cap firing mechanism which i don't think anything else has a double cap firing mechanism in the vehicle so you got the double cap firing mechanism there and that's kind of cool it's kind of crazy and it's a huge gun so yeah it really is set up for two people so next on the list we have a vehicle the jailbird crooks airspeeder it is really kind of a cool vehicle and it's one of the lower price point ones it's still pretty easy to track down and get complete and pretty cheap today now it comes with a few features on it first off a seat belt so you're going to be flying your figures around and you want them to to stay in place so i got a seat belt but as another thing is as a kid you could say look mom buy this for me it has a seat belt it's going to teach me the importance of wearing a seat belt uh, you do have these little stands, the kickstands that it stands on. They don't really hold all that well, but they do the job, I guess you could say. But uh, I, I could see more worn out versions just being destroyed and just falling over. So anyway, looking at this uh, all the way around, it does look cool. It just flies. It has a lot of detail, uh, a lot of parts and pieces. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably experience what it's like putting one of these together pretty soon. But here is like a back, uh, like a head brace. And he's got guns in the front, this giant sort of whatever kind of gun right there, and that spins. And then it's got uh, another gun on the side there. You also have these two bombs that you can uh, kind of slide off and just let them fall. Uh, don't let them fall. Don't lose them. But uh, pretty cool overall vehicle. So I believe uh, Kenner was acquired by Hasbro in 1991. And this is a 1988 Hasbro vehicle that was repurposed in the vr troopers line as the cyborg jet and so uh th i thought that was really interesting so what i think i'm gonna do is i got a really bad poorly boxed version and i'm gonna open it up and i'm probably gonna put it in the display because it's the same thing the same exact mold except it's slightly different colors some different missiles some different bombs kind of cool a nice reuse you know hasbro's known for reusing stuff kenner's known for reusing stuff so Getting that synergy and reusing their own designs, pretty awesome. I almost forgot the cap firing action here on this guy right there. There it is. But getting into the dragster now. All right, take a look at the dragster. The dragster itself is probably one of the cheaper made ones out of all of them. It does look interesting. It's very interesting, but it's just a giant hunk of purple plastic with a couple of yellow pieces of plastic connecting to it. It's not the greatest ever. Now, I'm missing almost all the stickers on mine. I think I got this for five bucks. I'm not even joking or lying. Five bucks, of course, I had to pay shipping. So after it was all done, like 11 or 12 bucks. But still, um, it's missing a wheel. If I got a wheel, I could reattach it. It wouldn't be that hard at all. So, uh, but 
again, I I got it for five bucks. I just like saying, hey, I finally got something cheap in this toy line. It was it was a lot of fun. So looking at it, you do have some pegs here. You can put uh, a figure right here or a figure right here. So you can have a couple of figures hanging off of the sides. Not really so much hanging off of the back. You do on the back here. This piece here is where the cap firing mechanism is. Everything's got to have a cap firing mechanism in it. You got this front pivoting double gun, which is cool. It's, it's pretty awesome. You see the engine detail, which, uh, you know, it's a dragster. And um, yeah, looks pretty good overall. Uh, looks like this other tire was kind of glued on. No, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that tire. Anyhow, so uh, the here it is from the back. It's There's not much to this vehicle. There's not much. I throw Cuckoo in there because here's the thing. Uh, you've got to actually dis assemble it to get a figure in and out properly especially because they're so big and it's the way it's set up so it's not a fun vehicle it's not fun to swap figures out but it does look kind of strikingly interesting on display so that's pretty much all it's there for so i hope you enjoy this look at the cops and crooks crooks the bad guys edition which so many people want to focus on the good guys i want to focus on the bad guys for my first video with cops and crooks and this is a very underrated toy line. This toy line is really cool. It's like if G.I. Joe was bigger and you could incorporate more into it, what would you get out of that line? You get Cops and Crooks. It's a beautiful looking toy line. The figures look amazing. They have so much functionality to them. It's like Hasbro wanted to drill in everything they could into these figures and into this toy line and they did a great job. Underrated, it was underrated by me when I was a kid and underrated by a lot of people today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And to dear Hanger, out. Cops. Central organization of police specialists. Let's do it, Buzz Bomb. Crimes are wasted. It's gonna be this easy. It'll take all the fun out of being a crook. Well, even Berserko, my numbskull nephew, managed to grab some loot. Well, forget about that flat foot for now. Just get to the lab and make sure Dr. Bad Vibes is safe. <laughs>